Welcome to Inform Sources on News Channel 3, where we talk about the week's big stories with local voices. I'm your host, Greg Hurst. Thanks for joining us. In a moment, I'll introduce our panel. But first, here are tonight's hot topics. Crime in Memphis is once again creating headaches for city leaders following the shocking robbery and killing of a St. Jude researcher in front of his wife and two-year-old child. Some are suggesting the National Guard be called in to help keep the peace or the state step up and provide more assistance. The issue of crime is expected to dominate the agenda of incoming Memphis Mayor Paul Young. We'll hear from the mayor-elect as he prepares to take office at a time when the city's image is taking a huge hit. Plus, there's more controversy tonight involving Shelby County Clerk Wanda Halbert. And it's all stemming from the recent closure of the Poplar Plaza office after the clerk got behind in paying the rent. So what does this all mean for Wanda Halbert's future? We'll take a closer look. But before we begin tonight's discussion, let's introduce our panel. I am joined by two veteran political analysts, Dr. Keith Norman, the former head of the Shelby County Democratic Party, and Terry Rowland, the longtime Republican Shelby County Commissioner. Gentlemen, it's good to see you both. Good to see, good to see you. you as well. Now, we're expecting fireworks tonight. Well, we're, we're talking two of your favorite topics, so we're... First of all, you. that was an oxymoron you started with. Head of the Democrat Party and a Baptist preacher. Somehow that don't <laughs> work out to me. Yeah. It works out really well for him. <laughs> so. Get him a shorter seat where his feet are touching. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Let's now, get down it, to the top. All right, so it is on. You can tell. <laughs> so let's begin tonight with the story that has dominated the news in Memphis over the last week. A St. Jude researcher is shot and killed in front of his wife and baby as he desperately tried to protect them during a robbery on the Memphis Riverfront. Alexander Bulikov was walking with his family along Tennessee Street when he was robbed by a masked man. Police say the gunman, identified as Marius Ward, then shot Bulikov as he tried to defend his wife. When Ward was arrested just a few days later, police say he confessed to being the gunman. This violent incident, along with a string of other recent crimes, is prompting some people to call for the National Guard to be deployed to Memphis to help maintain law and order. But police chief C.J. Davis disagrees. That's not the answer. The answer is, I don't care if we had the entire United States Army here in the city of Memphis. If we continue to see the same individuals committing crimes, you know, arresting our way out of this is not possible. All right, so let's start our discussion with you, Commissioner. You've lived in this area for a long time. You served as Commissioner years. of the county. Memphis is part of Shelby County. Do you agree with the chief? Uh, yes, let me tell you why. Uh, Brother John Harvey, who used to be with the Sheriff's Department, he's the uh, a technical genius. He's the one that found all them dead voters when I voted uh, for Senate. I mean, I ran for Senate at that time. He's doing a query now, and there's hundreds of people in Memphis and Shelby County that have been arrested over a hundred times and they're still out. Hmm. Now that's a fact. And what she said is correct. Uh, the DA, it's, it, he's, he's hurting us worse, I mean, more than happening. And we'll get to that in just a moment, but Pastor, let's bring you in on this discussion. Sure. What do you think the chief means when she says, we're not going to arrest our way out of this problem? Isn't She's, that at least a good place to start? That's a great place to start. She's saying what every other law enforcement person has said. We can't arrest our way out of the problem. We can't incarcerate our way, our way out of this problem either. There are other issues in this community. Arrest has to be part of it. Incarceration has to be part of it. Building wealth and improving the economy. A multi-pronged multi approach. approach has to be a part of it. Accountability of parents has to be a part of it. Mm. And so we have to look at this whole conundrum and quit shooting these fireballs to say this is it or that is it and this is a one-stop fix here. Having more officers alone is not the answer. All of these things are part of the solution and that's going to help fix the problem. I want to say this about though the poverty initiatives that need to take place as well. If we don't circulate dollars through an economy where individuals can be uh, better off and have jobs and have uh, an opportunity to excel, we're going to continue to have some form of crime. You can arrest those who create the crime. But is better off enough for some of these criminals? Some of them, it seems like they're wanting, to, this is a get rich quick scheme. Better them. off may not be enough for all of them. It's going to be enough for some. And so you take the ones who want to do better and give them an opportunity. Those who don't want to perform, those are the ones who you arrest and incarcerate. But you can't incarcerate 
everyone who's out committing crimes. Some of these crimes are juvenile crimes, and they're committing them not even knowing what's next. Stealing a car and driving around in circles. They're not chopping the cars up. They're not selling the cars. They don't have a plan. They're just doing recreational it's things. It's a thrill crime. It's just a thrill crime. You know, the fact of the matter is police are arresting criminals. How much of the blame should be placed on either the prosecution or punishing these perpetrators? Let me tell you, anybody that has watched and paid attention, when you got the city council and the county commission trying to pass laws saying, telling the police, you can't do this, you can't do that. First of all, they don't have that power. They, they can't make an, uh, they cannot make an ordinance because Back in 2018, I passed a law at the state that says that local government can't make a law or an ordinance more strenuous or less strenuous than state law. So they, ever, to them telling the police they can't make this kind of stuff, but that sends the wrong message out there. All right, you're not getting behind the police. You're not. You're not. You're not giving them the tools to work with. And at the end of the day, I mean, there's no deterrent there. But I, I'm telling you what I'm really worried about. What you're fixing to see, especially, I, my heart goes out to that family. You start fixing to see vigilante justice. Because I can promise you this. Somebody comes up in my house, I don't care if they're 14, 12, or whatever. I'm not going to ask no questions. And that's fixing to start happening. You know, when you, you hear this idea that's been floated around, and a lot of cities have turned to the National Guard in a time of crisis or in the time of violence. So some people are saying, maybe we should bring in the National Guard to Memphis. Is that radical or is that reasonable? That's overreach. Uh, it's not reasonable at this particular point in time. The National Guard does not perform this type of service in policing cities. They're here when you have a national crisis or if you had tornado or bad weather it's situations where they had to hold down safety and other things. Things. Is there an opportunity for our state to kick in more dollars? Are there federal dollars that we can leverage in some way to hire more officers and things that we can do to free up some men and women who are probably behind desks to put them on the streets? All of those efforts need to be made. Not It's not time for the National Guard. You know, there are some great kids in this city. There are some wonderful parents as well. But there are also some parents who aren't teaching, they aren't Absolutely. disciplining their, right. their, their kids as well. At what point do you maybe consider punishing some of the parents when their unsupervised children are committing crimes? You can absolutely do that. I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't know how you would structure it, but if a, if a, if a kid, um, but, but the first thing, you, the, the big first big problem is you don't have the, the, the parents that are taking uh, the, the time out with their kids, you know? So is that a, is that a possible solution? It's a think possible that's solution, but let's not shoot these silver bullets. Why aren't parents taking time out with their kids? They're trying to make a living. They're working two or three jobs in some cases, yes. We've underfunded education and schools. We've taken money away from schools where kids used to have extracurricular activities and opportunities to stay off the streets. They had peer mediation. We stripped that money away from them, and we said, fend for yourself. We took the schools system we decentralized it we made it nine school systems and so our dollars go further in other areas than they do in the urban communities we need more dollars we have a state right now that's sending back a billion dollars of education funds that they could be using in urban epicenters to help keep kids off the street and do some of these things. Whenever you take away resources from kids and you put them on their own, you have increased truancy, which is what we have. You have increased violence at a younger age. You have, And if you look at the age group that we have right now, these are kids that are in and coming out of school over the last few years when crime has been going up. Trace it back to when we start defunding schools in the city of Memphis. Right. You'll see a direct correlation. And we're going to continue this discussion because when we come back, where do we go from here? We're going to hear from the next mayor of Memphis as he's forced to face the city's crime problem head on. That's coming up next on Informed Source.